Um, um, so the town of Plymouth, right to know while I'm meeting, check with the chair of the Plymouth Planning Board. Due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12 pursuant to executive order uh, 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically. Please know that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting. This is authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that we are A, providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities, <coughs> video, or other electronic means. We are utilizing the Zoom platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through the Zoom platform. And the public has access contemporaneously to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate in this meeting through dialing the following phone number. One six four six five five eight eight six five six in the meeting ID one four five five six nine four eight one. Providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting using Zoom, and instructions are provided on the town of Plymouth website at Plymouth-NH.org. C. Providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are any problems with access. If anyone has a problem, please call 603-245-6098. D. Adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting or adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at that time. Please note that all votes that are taken during the meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each meet member states their presence, also please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Okay. I'm here, Rebecca Hansen. I think my cat's behind me, but that's it. Um, Carl, we'll go on to you. I feel like it's going to be really boring. I'm here, and uh, there's no one here besides me. Steve? Steve Whitman. Locked in the back room alone. Um, Marianne. Uh, Marianne Barnsley here without the dog, but other than that, I'm good. All right. Um, and I know there's somebody else. There's just so many pictures here. Phil. Hi there. Uh, Phil Lamro here. I am uh, alone in my office. Great. Um, we don't have Bonnie here, do we? She would have to call in, and if there's an issue there, that would be the issue. I know she attended the last meeting by phone. I'm not catching any of this. Uh, I think Brian said that she'd have to call in, and I think he was wondering if there may be an issue there. Brian, you're breaking up, so we're not hearing. We're hearing like every fourth word. Right. I understand right. so, I'm in town hall and it says that the connection is unstable. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so we don't have Bonnie. Um, I just want to bring it back to the board before we get really rolling into this because I do have concerns that, you know, I was clicking on the, the Zoom link um, that, uh, and it, as I do for, you know, every Zoom meeting I've attended in the past, well, forever, but, um, so I just want to make sure it's really important that we're not excluding anyone from participating, so if they're giving up because they can't access it via the um, web conference, are we excluding people from this meeting? So how does Bonnie usually log in? It's not, bon I mean, I'm wondering where Bonnie is right now. I'm sure she'll call somebody if she's having trouble getting in. Bonnie usually phones in. It's the, you know, the real purpose of this entire process is to facilitate a conversation between <coughs> applicants and abutters, and if we're not doing that adequately. So it's other people that um, that are trying to participate but can't. That's what I'm worried about. And Steve, you had your hand up. Yeah, while you were going over all the information, I went back out and looked at the website to see what you saw. And it does list both the phone number and the Zoom link. 
Um, so hopefully if the phone number is working, that would provide an option to, for people. Yeah, the, the idea was um, that we'd rather have people call in uh, from the general public when, the, when all this uh, was coming out about um, safety and trying to allow the best possible way for the meeting, we had decided to, so that we can avoid Zoom bombers, that we would have a call in for the general public to phone in. We prefer that. And also, uh, the problem was I quit. I can't provide tech support for everyone in the town. So no, I, I get I get the reason yeah. behind it. My my question is: Is it clear enough to anybody who might be just trying to jump into this right now as a participant that's not in the butter um, that wants to participate in this meeting? Well, I I think that's the preferred method is that is a call in meeting. That's what I understood from the lawyer. Uh, the 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 issue that was put out by the lawyers that the telephone conference was actually the standard. It's just and not the, the town website. It says either or, that's all. Yeah, so my, my, it's not whether or not we should be encouraging people to use phones, it's whether or not it's clear to people. Any, any other comments, Bill, Carl, Marianne? None. What actually? What you were saying earlier, or reading off, Rebecca? Did it? Did it reference Zoom? Did yeah. So, does it? It references it that it needs to be available, or or once again, can you have one or the other? So the phone is through Zoom. They'll be accessing this conference through the. Um, I feel you're upside down. <laughs> Um, um, it says that, yeah, so we're using Zoom for the platform for this meeting. People who are phoning in are using Zoom, but they're just using a call in version. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my question is, we, we have no way of knowing if there are members yeah. of the public who want access at this point who are unable to, to attend. Do right. we? I have body. Um, well, yeah. except for Sorry, the fact Steve, that Steve, we Steve, have. Hang on a sec, Steve. I have Bonnie on the phone. She just called me. And she said the phone number on the website's not working. So that might be answering uh -oh. the question. That, that kind of, yeah. Oh. Well, let okay. me give it a try. All right, we'll continue to troubleshoot. Apologies to everyone who has joined us this evening as we figure this out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can actually just see the number here is um, you know, looking at this correctly, 558. All right, that's me. I just called the number and I'm in the meeting. So the number uh, on the website is not the same number that I'm seeing from um, the number that I just read in the um, in um, right to know disclosure checklist thing. So oh, that was that was, just that was a generic. Just generic. Wait, hang up. I'm sorry. I thought you wanted a reference checklist. Uh, that was just something I had that Brian wanted. I oh. understand that. I just assumed people would take it off the website and the information that I sent you. Okay. Yeah, the numbers um, are it was only one digit off. Yeah, that was just a, a workup I did. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to read it verbatim. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, all right, so board members, what do we think? Bo did see What did Bonnie say? Did she, was she able to try again? or? Uh, Bonnie said she's watching on television right now. Um, so I have her on speed dial if we need her. Um, she's going to be watching the conversation if we need her to vote on anything or I can put her on speakerphone and kind of patch her in. Or if I got that number from Juliet, I guess I could call her and give her the correct number. Um, if we can put it in the chat field maybe here. Um, yeah, I'm calling her right now. I mean, um, I'd, like to, I'd like to see us proceed if we can because we have so many applicants with us. I'm sure <laughs> the same. Um, yep. 
you know, if we get to a point that there's a decision that seems too big to make tonight, if we can table it for two weeks from now, but at least yep. help everybody start moving along. Okay, no, that sounds good. Hi, Bonnie. He's calling her. Yeah. All right. Shall we proceed then? Yeah. Or we can wait for Bonnie to. <clears throat> All right. You good if I just start rolling with uh I'm going to put the minutes at the end since we've got so many people here and they've already listened to us sort of jump through local government at best. Um, so if we're good, I'm just going to roll right into um, to the, the, the subdivision. Does that work for everyone? Yep. Yep. And just as we're going, I would just want to remind everyone who's here the rules of um, participation are the same as they are if you're all sitting in the same room. Um, all comments need to be directed to the chair. I will open up the public hearing at a specific time and invite the public to comment. Um, but first, I will read the application information into the record. I'll invite the applicant to present a little bit of information. Um, if you want to speak, this goes for board members too, since there's so many posted stamps of faces, if you could raise your hand, that would be easiest for me. Um, and I'll pop up the chat as well. Um, if you want to try and catch attention and speak by um, putting something in the chat, that is fine also. If board members can help me by, um, if they see somebody wanting to speak in the chat, just um, try and slide me down. Does that work? Yep. All right. I am going to have to toggle back and forth between the agenda and this, so um, I am going to read off. The first application tonight is a minor subdivision from the parent parcel PID number 216-008 on Yetton Road, subdividing out a proposed parcel of one acre uh, for the new lot with 210 feet of frontage on Yetton Road and named 21.6 acres for the parent lot. This property is in the agricultural zone. Okay. Um, do we have a representative from the applicant? Yes. Kevin French. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I think there we go. If you want to go ahead and present your information, um, please go ahead. Okay. Um, basically, this is a, uh, they're just dividing one acre off the, uh, northwest corner of the property on Yetton Road. Um, they it will be uh, connected to the town sewer that goes by there. Um, and the uh, the driveway we have we obtained a driveway permit for the um, for the new road uh, for the new driveway. I've, I've got it on the screen but I don't know if you can see it or not. So are you uh, able to share your screen with us? Well, well, no, I just, I have it on one behind me. Okay. So, um, and I don't know if you can see it or not. So, um, this is my first Zoom meeting, hopefully my last, but anyway, um, <clears throat> so, uh, but, but basically they have a driveway, which is about 40 feet from the north west corner of the property. We have a state permit for it as Yetton Road is a state road. And uh, it's the, uh, like I say, we didn't need we don't need uh, state subdivision approval on this because it will be it will be tied into the town sewer, uh, which goes right by the lot. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a one it's a single dwelling residential lot in the agricultural zone, and that's about it. Okay. All right. So the board, any questions from the board about, um, ooh, looks like Bonnie, you're here. Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, Steve. I have the file pulled up. I can put it, I can share it if you want to just make sure everyone gets a moment to see it, what Kevin just showed. That would be great. Okay. Cool. Hold on one second. Oh, you disabled participant screen sharing. I guess I haven't been given that power. Um, I don't know if Juliet can give me said power, or if not, we'll at least we'll know for the next planning board meeting. Or maybe, uh, maybe okay, I, I'm going to try to make you a host. Hang on a second. Okay. 
work. They've tightened up the controls. I apologize since all the Zoom bombing has happened. They've changed um, a lot of the sharing capabilities. Uh, and I see. If it's not possible right now, that's okay. Just for the applicant's sake, I thought if we could just show it quick. Yeah. Oh, there I am. You let me in. Um, here we go. So, okay. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Is that okay? Yep. Yep. Looks good here. I'll leave it up for a minute, Rebecca, until you tell me to take it down. Um, all right. So um, questions from the board on the completeness of this application. I can only see three of you, so please speak up if you have a question. Okay, so no, no question about the completeness. Um, do we have a motion? And Steve, you could take this off of the screen share while we do this, so I can roll call it. Um, do we have a motion from the board on the completeness of this application? Uh, I will motion that we accept the application as complete. I'll second it. All right, I am going to run a roll for the vote. Um, we'll start with Carl. Aye. Steve. Aye. Marianne. Aye. Um, Bonnie. Aye. Phil. Aye. And I am I. Way to say that. Um, okay, so. Other questions from the applicant before we open it up to the public hearing? No. Um, so I'm going to open the public hearing in just a minute. A reminder to anyone who wants to participate, participate please raise your hand. Um, and if you would like to see the, um, see the um, plan up on the screen again, just let us know and we can do that. So it is 6.52. I'm going to open this up to a public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak of any nature about this application? I'm just giving you an extra second just in case. This is terrible. Um, okay. It's 6.53. I'm closing the public hearing, bringing it back to the board. Any further discussion? from the board. Maybe a motion from someone on the board to approve this application. I, I will a make a motion. Whoop. That's okay, good, Bunny. Okay, I would like to make a motion to approve this. I will second that. Okay. All right, taking the roll vote again. Carl. Aye. Steve. Uh, Marianne. Aye. Bonnie. Aye. Phil. Aye. Aye. Okay. We got through that first one. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I am now, Steve, do you mind just being the um, document uh, share as needed? That's totally fine. Okay. Um, okay. Unless the applicant, I think you can probably accommodate that, right, Jules, if the applicant wants to share their screen and be able to use the mouse to gesture towards things, can we accommodate for that? Yeah, either um, me or Andrew can share that okay. uh, capability. All right. Rebecca, I do have the most recent version for Mountain Village when we get to that point that Brian just sent. Okay, great. Thanks, Steve. Yep. Next up, a site plan review of a proposed 10,000 square foot building and related improvements for Mountain Village Charter School on PID number 213-031, an undeveloped 36-acre parcel, the parcel-wide agricultural and industrial commercial development zone. 
Do we have a representative for this application? All right, I see several people raising their hands. Who is going to present? Frank McLean. Frank McLean will start. Okay. Um, all right, Frank. Um, you're good. Do you need to share a plan or anything like that? Or would well, you like us to pull them up? Well, everything's been sent through the uh, the emails, and if Steve can bring anything up, that's fine. But we can get into that in a moment. What I wanted to do is just introduce the program, the project, and what we're doing. And Jamie is the board president. He's just going to give a quick summation of the overall goal, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, so the Mountain Village Charter School, for people that don't know, is a, is a public tuition-free school. Um, the all charter schools in the state of New Hampshire are public and tuition-free, just to dispel any confusion about tuitioning in or anything like that. Um, and we've been in operation since 2014, having received our charter in 2013. Um, we have currently 105 students, and our charter allows us to go to 156 students. The school is very unique in the world in that it blends nature-based and Montessori uh, education while delivering on the common core type curriculum that everybody's familiar with in uh, traditional schools. Um, we have been housed for several years in a, a hodgepodge collection of modulars and rental space uh, with less than adequate um, land. And for our particular educational program, we need land that's uh, that's particular. Um, so our proposed development is to remedy this hodgepodge of uh, housing things that we have going on and move uh, a short distance up the road onto um, Tenney Mountain Highway. Um, first planning board meeting, so is there anything else that I should be telling you guys about? So we are looking at thinking about the application, we first need to determine the application is complete. So um, there should be on the on the application, um, well, there is on the application a number of things where you um, had included in your plan, things that you were um, asking for a waiver for. So we need to go through those items just to make sure we understand, um, that, so we can determine if your application is complete or not. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at that checklist as well. Um, the the building we're using a design build uh, sort of approach, and so the building itself is not designed uh, yet. We have some basic schematics uh, for a single story building um, in an L shape. Um, then we can look at the uh, the site plan to to locate that. Um, but so I don't have what I've asked for. A waiver is um, on that first page is related to the design build process. Um, we don't Please. need uh Thank you. brian yes did were you saying something sorry uh no so somebody passed by my door sorry um so we don't uh next page uh we we don't need a waiver for uh proposed water sewer um because there is no none available to us at that point uh out on tenny mountain highway at the site um and then again um, elevation of the first floor and all existing proposed buildings on the site. Um, again, that's related to the design build. We can give you some general um, sort of impressions, but that's it at this point. Um, questions from the board about the completeness of the application? <coughs> Steve. I guess I'm wondering with the the information that Jamie identified that they don't yet have um, in the process, can we go through this as we have with other applicants and if we see that they satisfy all the requirements, approve the site plan, but have them just come back in if anything were to change drastically? Okay. So, so you're saying that we can still move forward unless they're, um, but have them come back in if they're going to alter a strange look to, put a strange look to the building or Something like that. Is that what you're yeah, I'm kind of asking the question, I guess. But yeah, if, we're gonna, if you ended up having to change your parking configuration and it was going to change drainage and building placement, I mean, no different than we probably would do on some of the commercial sites where they have a, a pad identified, 
but they don't yet know who the who the company's going to be, and then they come back in again. Yeah, I mean, I think it's that okay if I speak. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think Steve that that is uh, sort of the status of this project right now. Uh, it's it's similar to what you're describing. We um, there's the the plan that uh, Brian sent out that identifies the likely building area, the parking, the, the, the drainage, and all the other things that uh, Will could speak to. But that, um, you know, ultimately the, the plot is laid out. We don't know exactly what the building is going to look like. We can give you some excellent ideas based on some schematics that were developed over the past um, years, but uh, we don't actually have those building designs yet. Frank wants to speak. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm like, I'm thinking Frank, our our normal member of the public. Um, Frank, please. Okay. So some of the things that maybe the board is not familiar with is that the way that we're engaging in funding the build is through some different loan applications and some different grants. Part of that is a design build feature in order to keep the cost as reasonable as possible. Now we have specifics ingrained in that cost build, uh, in that design build um, bid package that are really shown in the uh, the schematic. That's the 10,000 square feet. Um, it needs to be, you know, some of our own particulars where it would be embracing of nature, non-intrusive into the neighborhood, et cetera. Those are all very well thought out. But we really can't present those as far as what the building will look like until we have you know, gone through that bid and design process. That being said, we have also included in the updated design placement for modulars. That would be a temporary solution for us um, to then allow us to purchase the land, get out of our current lease obligations potentially, and embrace the land and the site, working us onto that property so that we can then pursue further funding and the time period for the design build process. Will, who um, you guys have all met before, is online and he can answer any of the questions with the development or the layout of those buildings and how it will be um, like its intrusion into the topography you know, et cetera. We've already pursued the driveway permitting. We went over this with the zoning board when we got our approval for that variance. We've spoken with Brian at length. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that if you can kind of utilize Will for any of the questions for intrusion, the design build portion is really, you know, we're really tied until we can get through these steps for the funding. Okay, um, I've got a quick question about the modulars and it's sort of a procedure question too, that if the modulars are, could potentially be a phase one of this, um, what impact does that have on this, how we approve the site plan? Do we need to approve it with the modulars? Um, and then uh, sort of a phase development, I'm not quite sure how that, how that might work. Anyone have a insight into that? Um, planning board members, Brian. Um, if I may, if yeah. if they're ready, to, if the plan would um, work to their advantage to start with modulars, that would be approvable tonight, I think, mm -hmm. um, and then require site plan review for the permanent building. All right. Um, all right, so we still haven't accepted this application is complete, not, so we need to address that. Um, I think we've got the, the two waivers we need to think about is we don't have an elevation or design for the building. Um, and the, um, oh, the other question is, is my question was, the, um, does the sewer line not run by this site? I can answer that. Frank? The sewer line at that point is pressurized and the, the water sewer 
does not um, allow connection to the water when it's pressurized or to the sewer when it's pressurized. So there was there a septic location, potential septic location on the on the plan? There is on the revised one. Okay. The most All right, thank you. Um, all right, so um, discussion from the board about the completeness of this application. Steve. I'd make a motion that we accept it as complete. Okay. Second. Thank you, Carl. Okay, ready for the roll. Carl. Uh, aye. Steve. Aye. Marianne. Aye. Honey. Bonnie, do we have you here? Did you say, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I just didn't hear you. Uh, yes, aye. <laughs> okay, thank you. Phil? Aye. Aye. All right. Application is now complete. Um, Madam Chair, yeah. uh, what was the initial motion? The initial motion? I think you asked for who was the original motion, and I believe it was yeah. Steve. Thank you. My audio is, is in and out. Um, okay. So bringing it back to the board um, for questions, clarification, um, anything we need. Um, I have a question. I'm, I'm not certain that it's directly related, but I've been reading that uh, there's someone that owns contiguous land that is very upset about some of the uh, points. Um, she is concerned about uh, um, serious hazard due to uh, vehicles and pedestrians and uh, that there would be a health and safety and general welfare of the neighborhood issue. Has that been addressed or resolved? Can I address that? Go ahead, Frank. So I believe that that is, there's a couple of different things in what you're reading there. And I just need to bring this back up. But our neighbor to the east is Mrs. Sizabon. And um, she expressed some concern with the potential for our students to, uh, let's say, wander onto her pro, onto her land. She also expressed in our initial drawing that was submitted with the um, the building, uh, the permit, the per, I don't, the what do we call it, the application. There was a, a penciled in drawing on the land side that showed the proposed uh, Plymouth River Walk that we've talked about you know, at different stages throughout all development along the Tenney Mountain. In the drawing, it went over the property line. That was strictly to indicate if it was ever proposed. Hello. Damn it. So that is being addressed and uh, it is in the it's resolved now or it's in the process of being resolved uh, so please don't there was no um actual design or anything that was he misinterpreted what was there never we were never had an opportunity to speak with her as far as the crossing of the property line by our students that was one of her concerns. She made it clear that she wanted no trespassing on the property. We would mark that very well with, um, First, with then, different markers yep. to ensure that our our students didn't wander onto her property. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off for one second here, um, Brian. Do you have? I can't tell if you're you have an urgent question or need to speak. Yes, Madam Chair, you have to hear from the. Uh, uh, Mrs. She she called this afternoon. She asked that it be read, read into the record. I think it's appropriate to read the letter before. On it. Okay, I'm going to ask that you are not the one to read the letter. Um, so, 
should we read this letter into the record now before we have too much conversation about it? Or I guess we can wait till the public hearing. I would think so. Um, that would be more appropriate. The argument. Part. I didn't catch that at all, Brian. All right. Um, well, we definitely won't have Brian read into the record, but um, we can read that into the record um, when we when we get to the public hearing, which I'm happy to open up now. I just feel like there's a lot of there might be a lot of questions of clarification. I don't know if we need to get into some of the more site design. Um, if that would be helpful for the board or for the applicants to have, we'll present that. Anyone have a preference? One second, Frank. All right. Go ahead, Frank. Well, to address the board member's question, her concerns in the letter were trespassing. And the I don't know. I want to hold off on her exact concerns right now for the moment because I want to give her, I want to be able to state those in her words instead of having to translate them uh, or, you know, um, have us summarize them. So um, to move forward with this, though, I think that uh, we'll certainly address that. Um, but I think maybe we need to um, put that question on hold for a second and see if there's other site questions. Um, anything else? I have a list of questions um, as well. So is there anything on the site that needs to be presented from the applicant? Um, Uh, if you would like Will to give a quick summation of the land and et cetera, if the board wants to hear that, he's available. That would be that would be great. And I'm happy to project for you, Will, if you want to walk through the PDF. Um, sure. Why don't we do that? That would probably be because <clears throat> yeah, you've got the powers now. There you go. All right. move all your faces out of the way and uh steve you can even give will the power of the cursor and the pointer if you want i'm only a co-host so juliet would have to do that all right <laughs> um the junior host um, all right I'll so this I... Do you need that? I, I think I set the meeting so that you cannot control somebody else's computer because of uh, technical issues that were coming up with that. I can scroll down. I, with, uh, I think it's I think it's okay. I can just uh, I can talk through talk it through. Um, if Steve can just you know move the pages, that's fine. Yeah. Um, Steve, can you zoom out a little bit? Yep. There, there you, you go. go. Thank you. Yeah, so we can see the full sheet now. Um, so not much to see on this sheet. Um, you know, the project location is um, down by the rotary on Tenney Mountain Highway, um, and it it abuts the Baker River um, to the north. So if I'm going to go on to the existing sheet, I can just orient orient folks here. So um, this is the the portion of the property that that has frontage on Tenney Mountain Highway here. Um, <clears throat> we had a um, well, the well is delineated and, and surveyed uh, this portion of the property. Um, so if you, um, you zoom in a little bit, Steve, um, you can kind of see um, and scroll down. There you go. Um, there's, there's wetlands there. The, the hatching that you see on the, on the left side um, is, a, is a wetland and then a couple, a few pockets on the left side there as well. Yeah, right. Um, so the, the topography, you can kind of see the contours. It slopes from the bottom right of the screen to the, to the kind of top of the screen. Um, and the base flood elevation for um, the Baker is down towards the bottom of that slope, the existing slope there. Um, and you'll see old Route 25 is noted there. There's some, some nice stone walls in there um, and the, the old, uh, old Route 25 passed through there previously. Um, that's probably about all to see on this page. If we go to the next sheet, we can look at the, um, the site plan. And this is um, been working with, with the school on a, on a plan. And as, as um, 
I think Jamie mentioned we, we've shown some some locations for modulars here. Um, the intent would be to um, position them in such a way that that the the permanent building could be built. Um, this is a, a, rel, a basically a flat a flattened pad that that we're grading off there, so you can kind of see the the um, modules are at the edges, and then there's a building envelope that we've shown there um, also for the permanent building, and then it kind of slopes off in either direction. Um, driveway comes off the Tenney Mountain Highway, um, and then would head down basically old Route 25, and 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 they'd like to preserve, um, you know, one side of that stone wall and, and maintain a tree line between um, between the highway and the new driveway. And then we'd have a, a looped configuration for some parking down at the bottom uh, with um, another access, with, with a little access down to, um, to the lower part of the property as well. Um, so yeah, as of now, we've got, uh, we're showing a, we have a ditch line um, along the north side of the driveway as it comes down and then piping to a, a um, potential stormwater feature down near the wetland there. Um, and the parking would sheet away from the interior wetlands inside the parking mm -hmm. loop. Um, so yeah, it'll, it'll need a DOT driveway permit um, and then approval from, from you folks um, for site plan review. No um, AOT permit for the, the grading? Correct. Yeah, it's not, um, it doesn't meet the 100,000 square foot threshold. It's, it's a good bit less than that. It's a fairly small area. And it looks like the, the Baker is not a uh, jurisdictional shoreland water. Um, the Baker, you know, I believe it is, now that you say that, but I think we're far, I think we're farther away than that though. Yeah, we are. I looked on the, I looked on the map tonight. I don't think you're, I don't think the Baker is on the current list. At least it didn't show it on the map, but okay. if, if, if you're far enough away, it wouldn't matter. How yeah, far away from the river? Well, we're outside. We're outside of the environmentally sensitive zone, so we're we're farther than. Um, I mean, the, the the shoreland is 250, and and that's uh, 400, right? I think it is. We we did check that. Okay. 500 PS. 500. Yeah. So we're a good bit away from the Baker. I saw mention in the um, in the application about potentially having to put a bridge over a stream or a brook. Where is that? Yeah, that's correct. Um, if I can speak to, yeah. to that. Um, so uh, it, it's not on this PDF. Um, if you if you look at the small uh, trail that's going from the circular parking area down the slope, um, yeah, right there, Steve, the, um, that goes down to flat agricultural fields, and there's a brook in there called Mill Brook. Uh, it's the one that flows next to the veterinarian's office, uh, office and then wraps around to the west of the cozy cabin furniture and then behind. And it actually defines the, um, defines the boundary of the properties. Uh, that, that transects the lower fields of this property. It goes directly across them. Um, it's not particularly wide, but is a, is a uh, short, deep little uh, stream. So we would need to put something there beyond just, you know, a log. We'd have to have some kind of ability to walk across it with students in a safe, all-season fashion. Um, I, I can... um, are there questions from the board? Uh, this is Phil. I, I did, um, I just pulled up the DES list of of waters and in Plymouth it does list the Baker River as jurisdictional for the shoreland from the juncture of the east branch of the Baker River and Warren so it would be if you're if we're the, if we're within the distance that it, it uh, and you're doing construction there 
a permit may be required. What is but, the distance? It's 250 feet. We um, are far, far right. outside of that. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes you, it takes you almost 15 minutes to walk across those fields. It's one of those places where the Baker loops far to the north um, in that area. Yep. I spoke with BES directly and gave them where the river was, and we looked at it online, and we are well and truly out of any of the areas that are of concern. Okay, thank you. That would trigger a, us to be asking, well, within 500 feet. I would, if we see the, yes, the, the environment is sensitive on a, on a plan as well, so. Um, but we're, we're far outside of that. Okay. Um, do people still need to see the, plan all right um Steve, do you mind flipping it back to thank you um if i say that now questions about the yurt and shelters that could potentially go in at some point and where those are going to be and um well so it's kind of hard without being able to share, but um, there are some higher portions of those lower fields on the other side of that mill brook um, that would be a good place for all season shelter to um, be constructed, something uh, sort of uh, suitable for our educational program, I guess the best way to put it. So they're out in the fields. Um, I can't really show you. They're, they're probably a 10 or 15 minute walk from the school building be, the proposed be building. permanent structures they're not something you take down seasonally or um no that's not what we're envisioning although i mean if you're familiar with the yurt it's a it's a semi uh, how do you describe semi-permanent i'm not sure um yeah um, other questions from the board i have one when you're ready go ahead Keith. So I guess I'm going back to the procedural question um, of a phase site plan approval. So if we were to deem that what has been shown tonight is worthy of approval, any revisions when they have more information on the building design or any other minor modifications they may want to do that would that would trigger a site plan review, they could come back in for a revision, correct? Yeah. Ooh. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know how, I'm not sure how that works. Brian, do you have any insight into that? Um, yeah, depending on, you know, the, the scope of, of what's being, you know, kind of delayed. Um, in this case, I would encourage a, uh, not a, a full site plan review, but another meeting with the planning board showing the, the file with, you know, all attendant drawings and engineering and things of that nature. I mean, it could be a quick one. It's almost like providing an adult to do it live. I think I got most of that. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. <laughs> not, not your fault, Brian. No. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm, I'm very, very frustrated. Um, the, there's two ways to, if they had a con plan that they could present, that would be one thing, but I mean, Due to the, uh, we know that it's not going to be what we're looking at tonight. So you're right, Steve. It should be for the site itself, the uh, driveways and the drainage. Um, look at the, what depicted on there as modular structures as temporary and then require a, uh, a, a review by the board with the final plan for the permanent structure. Sounds good to me. Yep, that sounds good to me as well. Um, other questions, comments from the board? Um, the approval could be conditional upon uh, receipt of a driveway permit from the DOT. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm willing, willing to consider moving forward with this at this point. Yeah, I think the uh, essentially any of our approvals come with that the boilerplate condition that all necessary federal and state permits have to be in place um, as a condition of, of approval. Of that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, all right, so I am going to, unless there's other questions for the applicant and the board, um, I'm going to, if I can pull up the letter um, and read it, I'm happy to do that if someone else wants to. Um, do I need to do that once the public hearing is open, Brian? Uh, that would be the appropriate place for it okay. because it is public uh, input. Okay. Um, is anyone itchy to read the letter? All right, I got I got to open it up. So, um, let's see. all right, I am going to open the public here at 726, and then I am going to read a letter from the abutter. Um, Marilyn, you know how to say her last name. I believe it's open. <laughs> I said that was garbled. Yeah, it looks like Zabin. Zabin. Okay, I will say it that way. Thank you. From Marilyn Zabin um, from Shrewsbury, Mass. Um, and she is an owner of an abutting parcel. Um, 47 acres map. Uh, 213-034-000 on Mountain Highway. Um, in regards to the Mountain Village Charter School, um, let's see the draft that she reviewed. She is against this. Um, okay, I'm trying to read this here. Sorry. Um, there. Okay, so she's responding directly to the, Brian, she's just responding to the ZBA. Oh. Is that what this is? Um, it's, no, because it came in well after the ZBA okay. meeting. Okay, All right. Well, I'm just going to read it as it is, and we can interpret it. She is against, uh, so draft December 3rd, 2019, is noted on town Pullman Zoning Board of Adjustment under um, 1204.2 special exception. I am against A4 and A6 as follows. A4, um, and this is in quotes, there will be no nuisance or serious hazard to vehicle or pedestrian, end quote. And then A6, again in quotes, there would be no significant effect resulting from such use upon the public health, safety, and general welfare of the neighborhood in which the world, the use would be located. No end quotes, but I'm assuming they're there. Um, I am not in agreement to any future river walk as depicted on the Mountain Village Charter School map. It appears to extend onto my property. No one is allowed to enter on my, onto my property at any point that will be considered trespassing and should that ever occur, measures will be taken under violation of trespassing. Mountain Village Charter School has 110 students presently with a potential of 130 students cap with a lot of the classroom time is spent outside. Students range from K through 12 grades. Please provide me information as to the Mountain Village Charter School intent, how Mountain Village Charter School intends to secure the boundaries that abut my property. This is written notification that no one is to enter onto my abutting property, whether it be 110 students with a cap of 130 students at Mountain Village Charter School, the teachers or other safety of everyone mentioned above is paramount. Should there ever be any violation of trespassing, it would be subject to all rules and regulations under no trespassing. I am not in agreement to any future river walk as depicted on the Mountain Village Charter School map where it appears to extend onto my property. No one is allowed to ever is allowed to enter onto my property at any point. Please provide me acknowledgement of all my rights and that of the Mountain Village Charter School remedy. I do not want the Mountain Village Charter School to infringe on my property in any way, shape, or manner. Sincerely, Marilyn Stavon. All right, so I think directing this question at the applicant, um, I mean, trespassing laws in New Hampshire are what they are, um, but maybe it would be helpful to address just how you're going to manage kids from trespassing beyond the boundaries of the school property. Sure, I, I, can, I can speak to that, at least during school time, right? I mean, if this person, is this abutting landowner really is concerned about um, infringement of their property rights, they should post it. But um, during school time, students are supervised in these outdoor classroom spaces and 
So there would be a variety of things keeping them from um, traveling on Ms. Zaban's property. There'd be, um, you know, supervision by teachers and uh, assistant teachers. We are happy to put up some form of appropriate like line marking along the property boundary so students have a visual reminder. You know, we, we live uh, right now in a school with a very tight boundary with uh, two other abutting landowners who don't really want us on their property and we manage that every day. Um, there have been some places where we put up a yellow polypropylene rope to remind the younger students to stay inside that. Um, and then others, it's, you know, there's natural boundaries in the woods that are pretty clear, like the, the end of the edge of the forest or whatever. So our students are, are very land aware. Um, and when we say don't go past the edge of the meadow or this or that, they don't. I mean, as much as any student, um, you know, listens. Uh, so, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't feel like it's a, a challenge to prevent our students from going on to Ms. Zaban's property. Um, and oh, a driveway and I, permit. I'm oh. so sorry, but I, I did want to speak to also the Riverwalk idea. The Riverwalk is not really our idea. That, that, um, that diagram was just meant to illustrate that it's the school's intent to have some walking paths and trails that during off school hours are open to community members and would we would happily allow to connect with any proposed town river walk as it develops right i mean that's it's so it's not something that we're seeking to develop and if the pencil line happened to go over her property boundary that's that's unintentional as we have no interest in doing that um, to, to push a river walk onto her property or anything like that. That's just uh, an error of documentation. Okay, thank you. Brian, I thought you had your hand up. I did, Madam Chair. Um, I received a phone call today uh, from the abutter on the other side, um, whose mm -hmm. name escapes me presently, um, who had some uh, questions, you know, about how the school was going about, and I walked him through it, and he thanked me, and he said, to tell you that he supports this endeavor for the uh, Mountain Village Charter School. Okay. Um, I just wanted to address one more issue from the abutter comments, and that was the one about, I think, some highway safety. And that is in the hands of the DOT driveway permit. So um, the DOT has their own assessment for determining if it is safe to we put a driveway in the location that's affected. So. Can I ask a question regarding the comments in the uh, letter that was submitted? Yeah. All right. Um, Brian, I'm assuming, based on the language of in the letter, I'm assuming that A4 and A6 are uh, part of the test for the special exception that was issued by the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Does that sound familiar? That's Phil. They're part of the criteria. Okay. So I think we should note that her objection to the decision of the ZBA is not anything we can appeal or rule on. We are, uh, they are a judicial entity and, and we are a planning board. If she is in objection to the decision that was made, she can seek redress through the court system, but our board cannot overrule the decision of the ZBA. I think so. I guess I also just want to clarify for anyone watching at home that Mountain Village Charter School um, should not, I guess, I don't know, we shouldn't be giving them a hard time at all about the Riverwalk. I mean, Will's worked with us on other applications where we've really asked applicants to help, to help fulfill a vision that the town has, the master plan for access. And we're never going to do that without participation from landowners. But if Mountain Village Charter School was interested in doing it within the bounds of their property, that's a wonderful thing. And I just wanted to address it. That's a good point. Carl. Uh, yes, I want to um, agree with that. My concern was uh, that this project would get four, five, six steps down the road and run into a blockade that was going to cost a lot of time and money. I just wanted to make sure that this was handled before too much went into it. 
that's why I brought it up. No, I think it was it was an important thing to bring up and discuss. So, um, and that's that's really why we do this, Marianne. And just so it's clear to me, um, when Phil referenced the ZBA decision, was that did that include um, her concern about students wandering over to her side, or is that something we potentially would work on to address? And uh, who's who's who deals with that? Us or the ZBA? So the ZBA, um, it was a special exception from the ZBA um, to allow an educational establishment in the agricultural and industrial commercial development zone because it's a gotcha. split zone parcel. Um, so it really wasn't about the um, about the uh, the use of the property so much as it is about, or it is about the use, but not about how students are using the property. Um, but it was just more the, the educational use in the zone that it did it. Okay. Okay. Um, so her can go ahead. I think that uh, as far as how we can, you know, so this is now in that essentially is an approved use because the ZBA has has, has deemed it so. Um, so uh, and please, someone interrupt me if I get off on too much of a tangent here. But really, I think that. I don't know if we can put conditions onto the approval that say students will not cross the, the property line. Um, the trespassing laws, being what they are in New Hampshire, I believe we are, you have to tell people to stay out if you don't want them there. So um, really, when it becomes a legal issue, then someone posts their property to keep people from going onto the property. Um, so now this is a tangent I feel like I'm afraid I'm going to take us all on. But um, so, I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't think we can put a condition of approval that says the school will not allow students to cross the property line. But I think that I'm satisfied with the explanation from the applicant of how they manage their students to keep them from from wandering freely. And um, so, it, do you, does the rest of the board feel that that was a, sufficient enough to address the concerns of the applicant? Yes. Okay. Well, I guess. Um, sorry. Go ahead, Marianne. I guess my only uh, concern was sort of listening to the abutter and her concern and then Jamie assuring us that, um, you know, the students um, don't, you know, in the, in the situation they're at now, the students don't wander off. However, at, at the end, Jamie, you said um, they listen to us as much as kids will. Um, yeah. So, so, I guess, well, so Mary, Mary, and I guess I'll, I, I shouldn't have probably said it quite that flippantly, but so what, what I mean to say is that the, at our current location, um, we have two different uh, abutting land every day successfully. Um, you know, uh, the, there, are, um, there are yellow ropes that line the side of the school where the youngest kids are. Um, and then the students, it's part of their classroom norms to stay inside the boundaries, essentially, uh, mm -hmm. for the older kids. And th that is managed successfully, I guess. Uh, um, that's managed successfully every day. The, I guess I would just say, though, that, I mean, as an educator, I would just say that someday some kid might step over that line, right? And um, the only way we could ever prevent that is to put uh, – to have the, the budding landowner put a fence up the entire distance along those fields, mm. right? I mean, there's no way to fully prevent that without a fence. Right. So, um, I mean, that's why I, I hesitate to, to provide guarantees, right? We, we, we're happy to mark the property line and build that into the school's outdoor curriculum, um, but to, you know, to fence it would uh, do a couple of things. First, it'd be, it, it would it would be in a floodplain um, with a big fence. Um, it would uh, in, impinge on the, the outdoor education experience that the students are having to have a big fence suddenly, uh, and it'd be expensive. So I don't know what else that we would be able to do. Okay. I guess Can I, I just, just say something. Sure, go ahead, Bonnie. This Sorry. is Bonnie. I can't. I can't raise my hand, but I mean, again, but <laughs> uh, I just, yeah, I don't. I don't think the fence is any kind of an answer. In fact, that will intrude on whatever wildlife is out there, 
And, you know, with things going up all the time, we got to think of, you know, all the animals in the woods and, and you know, keep putting fences up. You're going to just <laughs> create such a problem. And the kids, as far as I know, they're there for a school day for so many hours. And I would assume, you know, that they're quite supervised. I can't picture too many kids just wandering off where the teachers don't know where they are. Am I, you know, that's the way I see it. That is correct, actually. I mean, a student, while we're in outdoor school with typically two hours of outdoor time per student per day, that time is supervised right. and, you know, organized. It's not a free-for-all. Um, so kids are right. not wandering on their own. That's, that's a good assumption. Right. Brian, okay. real quick, and then yep. you put his hand up. Um, I think the question has been asked and answered, Counselor. Um, she showed uh, reluctance, you know, she asked what they were going to do. The uh, applicant asked in a very clear manner of what their measures were. Any enforcement or anything else is subject to civil and criminal law at this point. I mean, everybody knows. So, I mean, it's a matter of Basically, you've been warned. If, if the kid trespasses, they're going to come after you. So you come from trespassing. And we assume that, that that's not going to happen. And if it does, well, th there's as much risk for that as there is any given day. I mean, considering canoe traffic or anything down the river, certain people could pull in and, and climb there. Um, okay. There's no provisions to keep those folks out other than the natural bank of the river. So I think for the purposes of the planning board, the question has been asked and it had been answered, and it seems that you have accepted the answer from the school. Steve? Brian covered it. Yeah. I was going to say. All right. The board is satisfied. Mm -hmm. is, is the board satisfied? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so we still have the public hearing open. Um, are there other members of the public that would like to speak um, about this application? I see a hand up. Stacy? Um, yes, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Jeff Therrien, uh, not Stacy. Stacy. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> going from a remote, um, from a remote computer. Um, I own the building next door, um, the old uh, rock barn, our own barn building. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, a point of clarification, the lady who, the abutter who wrote the letter, what is on her land? Is it 47 acres of just land, or does she live there? Is there an apartment building there? I'm not familiar with the parcel. So is she just, is it strictly land that she has that she's concerned about that the kids are going on? That's, if I might answer, I know that land pretty well. It is, it's just river bottom land. Yeah, it's agricultural land that's directly out behind the barn. Okay. Down the bottom, all that stuff that goes out into the large, peninsula in the river that has lots of uh, silver maples on it and the agricultural land. That's it. Okay. Um, you know, when I, when I first went to the zoning board and heard about the project, you know, one of my concerns is, you know, the, the children being outside as a school and then obviously coming onto my property. I, I, it's not, I'm not unre unrealistic and I'm going to tell you it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when they do it and it's going to happen. Um, I appreciate that you offered to um, mark where your land is for the kids. Um, and that door swings both ways because I have an apartment building there that I rent, obviously, um, the barn, the storage bins. I have people that will take their snowmobiles out of the storage bins and cruise the land over there. So the door swings both ways. The, you know, those children eventually are going to cross the line. Um, maybe a tenant of mine is going to climb out of the storage bin or out of the apartment and cross the line. Um, so it is a bit of concern of mine of the children coming over there just because I have tenants there and I think that's obviously different than someone who had vacant land. Um, I'm not one that I'm going to run up there and put trespassing signs all over and, and all that. I'm not going to do that. But I just want, you know, it is a concern and if there is ever is a problem with it, I'm a very approachable landlord in town that, you know, can can be reached for any issues. Um, my, my second um, question is uh, when I went to the zoning board it was my understanding that there would be a, a 10,000 square foot building on the property and this is the first that I'm hearing that there's now maybe four um, what did you call them school modules or um, is that what you call them the the I got the trailers or the modules or I I didn't know that there would be two modules like on my property line on that side is, is that anything that's going to be, if, when those are there, is that anything that's going to be buffered from the site of my building? 
and or I guess a question of the board is how long do those modulars stay there? Is that something they stay for a year, two years, five years until the building is built? And then when the building is built, do those modulars go away? Um, that's that's really my my two things that that I was concerned about with with this. I'm not I'm not against your project or anything like that. It's just those are those are my two concerns. Having having a hundred children in the field when you have renters in an apartment building, um, you know, it, it's it's going to have an effect on my building as far as who's going to rent it. Um, some people may not want a hundred children in their back backyard. Um, or running around. Um, so it, it'll have an effect on my building. The building has gone through an enormous change in the past two years. It's moving forward in a great way, and that's where I want to continue to go with it. So thank you for listening. All right. Can we, you can, um, one of the representatives from the applicant address the, um, the issue of how long will the um, modular classrooms? stick around, will those eventually get phased out, any type of screening, I think we don't know exactly what they look like, so, yeah. Um, yeah, Frank, you're in the dark over there. Um, yeah, I'm I, kind of, uh, I, can, I, can, I can answer that uh, to the best of my extent, and then Frank might uh, chime in too. So, um, the, Jeff, the, thanks for your comments, and I, I totally appreciate what you're saying, for sure. Um, the, just to, to address the modulars first, the, the modulars we're hoping are a two-year maximum solution, all right? Um, they, we don't want to take down, we want to take down as few trees between our property as possible uh, because even after the modulars are gone, our buildings are going to be there and we like the screening just as much as you do. Um, so that's part of our consideration in our site plan and site development is to remove as few trees as possible that fits well with the school's nature-based program anyway. Um, so th that's our our goal. Um, we're con we're continuing to move forward with fundraising. We have um, we have building design things going on at the same time as all of this. Um, so we're hoping that two years max the the modules would be phased out. Um, they called modulars, but they look kind of like you know nice white buildings. They don't look um, you know, uh, really commercial or, or whatever. They're really commonly used in school places. Um, I could send you a picture or, or, or something like that. Um, th they also are what we've been using already uh, at one of our sites uh, over by the traffic circle. So I, um, so that, I mean, that that's what I know about the modulars and the screening and, and the timeline to new building. Okay. Um, in terms of the in terms of the um, the impact that having students next door to you might have, um, you know, we've been we've been really close to 1766 Brewing Company and uh, their restaurants and modulars. Uh, there there are rental units, uh, storage units now for two and a half years, and um, that's been very successful. Um, you know, it, when you think of outdoor Kids going outside in the school, um, kids in Mountain Village don't tend to like congregate in a playground and create chaos uh, 100 kids at a time. Um, so the whole reason that we like this property is that there's 34 acres of Riverland that the students would be spending hours in. But there's, I, I, I don't know if you've walked back there, it's not just a field. You know, there's tons of forest and um, other places, and that's where they would be, essentially having these outdoor classroom experiences out there. Um, so I, I'm sure there would be some noise and some whatever, but I don't think it would be as intrusive as maybe it might sound at first. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. And, and in terms of crossing the the property line, um, I'm sure it might happen at one point or another. I agree. Uh, but I don't think it's a problem that would emerge as like a consistent problem is the best way I can say it. Um, like some kid wants, and if, you know, if we needed to put in a, um, you know, a, a fence in between us along that stone wall, I mean, to prevent some kind of incursion by your, your renters or by our students, I, I think that might be a reasonable solution. Um, it's really different than putting a fence along uh, the entire thousand foot property line uh, between ours and uh, Ms. Zaban. Thank you. 
Does that, I, it, I'm happy to answer whatever else. If you know, that's all I can say to speak to it. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Help oh, that answer it. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions from the public? Comments? Anything? All right. It is 7:50. I'm going to close the public hearing. Bring it back to the board. Um, other questions, comments, things that need to be addressed um, before we uh, potentially make a decision this evening. Steve. Um, I guess overall, I really like the site plan as far as um, the traffic pattern, the flow in there. I appreciate that where the driveway comes in, um, but I do have a concern um, that Jeff Jeff changed his name, um, that Jeff shared. Uh, and I, I think on any application, if we had someone that was going to place buildings, what, even if, I mean, two years is a long time if it was on my property line. So if I can see that the modulars are on the side setback and one of them is also right at the back of a front setback. And so I think anything we can do to kind of soften that visually um, would be helpful or seek an alternate location. Um, and I realize in the end, it may not be two years. I know it's hard for the school because of the process you're in to really have any, to be absolute about it. But I think at least as a planning board, we should consider what could be a condition of approval. Uh, I see a hand, uh, Frank is raising his hand. Go ahead, Frank. What's not shown on there is the thickness and the denseness of the forest between the two. We're not trying to cut and open up, um, you know, the the whole space in order to, you know, have a whole bunch of visibility between the two. We want to buffer as much as any. Our students don't want to go over there. So we're going to direct all of the outdoor learning away from both the property lines and the main road. So those are going to be oriented so that, you know, you, you want to go into the learning spaces down below. We're not trying to be right up next door to Maryland's land, and we're not trying to encourage the students over there at all. So as far as, you know, what we can do to promote, you know, the visible, you know, that intrusion into the neighborhood, we're trying to keep as much, this has been part of the design process with Will all along, is trying to keep as much of the forest there as possible so that we're as minimally intrusive as possible. That's just the basis of our nature-based school. We need to be immersed in nature. So a big open parking lot and you know lots of you know open space is not in the design. That being said, we'll do our best. You can even see where we've moved the access to the blower fields as far away from those property lines as possible. You know, the back of that other property line is not developed at all over there. So we're really trying to encourage to keep away from those property lines as best as possible. Um, you know, that's the buffer of keeping as much thick overgrowth there as possible, as well as what we can do to really promote the migration of the students from the buildings to the spaces out back away from the property line and things that we can do. Thank you. Um, so, Steve, are you thinking that in a, in a condition of approval, we could say, you know, if the modular classrooms are going to, if their lifetime on the property is going to extend two years, that the applicant will need to come back to the board in the same way that they would for a potential phase development coming up later on? Yeah, what you're thinking? if we could add in the piece about maintaining that vegetated buffer that Frank just mentioned, that's within the setback. Yeah. Um, and Jeff and Frank would have a better idea what that actually looks like. We haven't done a site walk, but um, yeah. if all parties are happy with that, that's fine by me. Right. So that's the other question. Is this something that we could potentially approve or make a decision on this evening, or do we need to, um, I mean, a, a site walk is going to be difficult in these current times, but is this something, can we each do a drive-by or something like that? Do we need to get a better visual to, for us to, uh, to move forward with that? That's a question. We didn't sound like one, but that was a question. Board members? Yeah, the, the, the walkthrough would be helpful 
Um, but yeah, how, how do we do it? That's a tough one. Is this yeah, I, I agree. This, it, this is Bonnie, but I agree. It would make it more clear to everybody if we could see it. We all, you know, we all know that the site walk does open up our eyes to different things. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult to do it. So um, yeah, I don't know what to tell you really. It, can I say hang on one second? Any other board members opinions on uh, the necessity of a site walk? So I, I'm not necessarily sure that I need a site walk, although um, not, a, not an organized one, but if we have time, if we're going to table this, we would certainly all have time to uh, investigate independently if that were uh, if, if uh, access were granted by the by the applicant, um, the other thing to consider is if we are considering an approval of um, the, the plan as it's currently presented, which is, is including um, modular uh, structures for teaching. Um, I, I don't think we can apply in the kind of time period at which the applicant would have to reapply in that, um, you know, once they're there, they're there. And if they're fundraising to build a school, you know, I don't think we can say, oh, it's been three years and you haven't raised enough funds, you can't have them there anymore. So I think the, yeah. you know, the, the, the approval has to be, it would be tricky to say that it's conditional for a period of time. So I, I think we have to consider this approval as, as basically a, until they uh, seek a change to put a more permanent structure in. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Um, Steve, what do you think of, of that? Oh, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Frank. Uh, so just to, for a point of clarity, was the site walk to address the buffer zone between um, Jeff's property and our proposed buildings? Um, this is something we talk about a lot in applications as they come up, as we, we spend a lot of time, whether we're sitting around the same table or you know sitting around a bunch of computers. Um, it's hard to visualize exactly what we're talking about without looking at them. Um, and uh, and we're encouraged by uh, the state um, planner's guide to not make hasty decisions, to make good decisions. Um, and so if we feel like as a board we need to, to get a better visual of actually seeing it beyond um, beyond the, the um, flat piece of paper or computer screen in this case, um, it's really just to get a better picture. Um, it's hard to say, okay, we've got one butter who's saying this, another butter, a butter who's saying that. And just gauging what the what it actually looks like from from the from the site um, from the butter's perspective. So um, it's really it, it's a bit more big picture than than just about um, the very specific concern. So sure. And if the site walk was something that you wanted to do, I'd, I'd encourage you to keep in mind that nothing up there is staked out to indicate distances from the property line, et cetera. <clears throat> um, Brian. Thank you. Um, I encourage you all to go to the website to tap for that and toggle between the property um, map and the satellite view. You can actually see the satellite view with the overlaid. There's your boundaries right there. You, uh, it'll show Jeff's building. It'll show uh, everything in that area that you want. You want me to screen share um, Google Street View? Sure. Or the, this the is something we map don't usually do in meeting, but now that since we can, sure. Well, I was I've been looking at the tax map all night, and it was I saw thought somewhat helpful, but um, and then I just went to Street View, which is pretty much this is actually better than we're going to see right now because there are no leaves on the trees, right? Um, so I believe this is Jeff's building. Don't make fun of me because I drive down the road. Um, 
But so somewhere in here is the property line, Frank? Yes, yeah, so it's to, I want to say it's behind the telephone pole. If I remember what the survey said, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to blow it up on my screen right now, but it's... Um, I, I believe they like, they like to put utility poles on property lines. Um, I, this is Will. I can, it, it's, the property line is um, just to the left of that uh, large maple there. I think it's a maple. That, oh, here? Okay. Yeah, just to the left of that, but it kind of goes at an angle. So, you know, it's between the utility pole and that maple, and it kind of goes back. And as it goes away from the road, it goes to the right, like closer to Jeff's building. I believe. Oh, I see. Back this way. Yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah. 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 Yep. I mean, this helps me just to see how thickly vegetated the understory is, to Frank's point. Um, and I'm happy to pull up any other layers people want to see, but I didn't know if that would be helpful, Rebecca. I'm actually, do you mind, is it quick to pop the, um, the plan back up? Yeah. Yep. Um, and those, um, the modulars on the property line could be pushed in a ways we're just trying to keep room for the proposed area for getting equipment around in there so i'm just wondering if i mean i can see i'm assuming the squiggly lines is denoting forest cover um i'm wondering if we can get the just get an actual established buffer on the the plan that shows that it exists or if i'm if the one is already on there that's great um, um, I would agree with you. If we could have it as a condition of approval, that it be shown and it not be cut. What thickness of buffer would that be? Um, I think that that's the question we're trying to ask. So if we can, um, uh, and I didn't see who asked that. Um, I think Jeff's um, trying to. I'll, I stopped sharing because so Jeff could. <laughs> Jeff, ask a question. Yeah. Um, if we, if those two buildings were shifted on the other side, I guess we'll call it the west side of where the other building is, you know, the new building is going, we wouldn't have to worry about any buffer between the property. But I don't know how that ties into Will's whole master plan. But if it, can they be just bumped over to the west side? Where it looks like that well in the picture you have like the parking lot there and a little walkway going to it can can both of those just be shipped yeah like where steve has his cursor can they just be shifted there i i don't know if that screws up the rest of will's whole plan with his parking lot and everything else and then we wouldn't have to worry about you know you wouldn't have to worry about the buffer with the uh with the modular classrooms well i think um <clears throat> You know, the, the, the idea that the modular classrooms as we have them laid out, you know, there's, there's as Frank pointed out, I mean, there's certainly some flexibility to where they land. Um, you know, once they're there, I think ideally I would assume the school would prefer them not to move around. Um, so, so, you know, the intent is to place them in, a, in such a manner that we can, um, you know, hopefully not have to move them when they go to build the, full, the, the final building. Um, and I think the reason we did it this way was was so that the final building would be further away from the property line, actually. <laughs> you know, so the, the building envelope, as you see it, um, create would, would have more of a buffer to your property line in the end. Um, but as a result in the temporary condition, it, you know, they're closer. Um, if we shift them the left of that pad, as you kind of said, you know, what you're pointing at there, Steve, is actually a slope, you know, a slope. It would have to go to the right a little bit in the dashed envelope area. Um, but where you see 520, that, that 520 would be kind of the top of a, a slope there. Um, so if they went there, that's an option, I suppose, and then the, the permanent building would then probably have to shift closer to the property line. Hmm. Um, 
So I want to get back to my original question. Can we establish a, buff, a wooded buffer um, as part of the plan and have it written in there that there is a, you know, this much distance of wooded buffer and have that be a part of the plan? So we could, um, we, we did, we have, sh we did shoot tree line. Now that's usually the, um, there's understory in there too that doesn't count. So like when we shoot, I, we, when we shoot tree line, we usually are shooting the mature trees um, at the edge of where the trunks are. So the canopy goes out and then there's understory under it. I mean, I think what we're getting at is we'd like to maintain at least that 15 foot setback as a vegetated area, right? That's yeah. like what we're getting at. Um, we're currently showing a little bit of grading in there to, to account for that out. But I think we could modify that and say that, you know, that, that 15 foot area is, is kind of untouchable essentially and maintain a vegetated buffer if, if Frank and Jamie are okay with that. You know, I think we can modify the, the grading to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. All right. Does that does that seem like a something that's going to protect the the property line and the and the um, abutter next door? Works for me. Okay. I mean, we're balancing two things. One is you know the the applicant's um, ability to do what they want on their property and trying to limit the impact on the abutter as well. So it, you know, it's trying to strike a balance between those two things. Okay, so back to the potential site visit. Is that something we need to do? Or are we good to try and make a, do we have enough information? Do we feel like we have a good, a good enough sense of what's going on here to make it, potentially make a decision this evening? I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm good to make a decision, I think, so. Yeah, I, I think Steve's um, sharing of the, the uh, Google Earth perspective has eliminated my need to do a site walk, so I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward at this point. As am I. All right. Marianne? Yep. Yeah, as well. Yep. I'm okay. Bonnie? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. All right. So if we were to pursue an approval, we would just add as a condition, aside from the required state, federal, local permits, um, is uh, coming back to the board with any uh, with the phase development. So as the building plans are um, are finalized, come back to the board with those plans. If there's going to be additional structures, um, I would say that are permanent or you know beyond a or something like that. I would think that would probably need to come back to the board too. That's just changing the use of the property in a way that could potentially impact um, impact others surrounding um, surrounding the property. Um, does that make sense? As can, I ask, can I ask a question related to that? Um, currently, there, the site plan doesn't show any lighting or signage. Would you want any anything regarding signage or lighting to be documented before it was permanently constructed as part of that condition? Um, yeah, so I did see some one of the things that I got as part of the application did show the location of a sign, I thought. Um, if I could just say, yeah, so this most recent site plan is missing some of the annotations from the previous site plan, Phil. And so the, the it's in the documents somewhere. Um, but uh, um, I think it, I'll, I'll let you guys find it yourself. But um, so it does show signage and lighting um, in there for sure. Okay. Brian right. made sure that I didn't neglect that. Okay. So the final, the final plan will need that stuff on it. Okay. Yes. And one of the things that's not shown um, is kind of pedestrian circulation within the mm -hmm. site. I mean, you can't probably do that till you know where the building's going to be and the design of the building, but. Yeah. So that, yeah, that may be a little part of it. So, Will, you know you would be able to come to a meeting here with us without talking about sidewalks. So. Are, we, are we bringing that, uh, we bring concrete sidewalks out to Tenny Mountain here? <laughs> I don't think we are. <laughs> no? no? Okay. <laughs> Not next door. Yeah. <laughs> but there should be a um, way for people to get out because we see Mountain Village parents biking to school every day. So there should be an yep. easy way to 
they can walk into the site from Tenny yep. Mountain. Yeah. So, um, is that something you want to see on the plan as is, or as we get closer to the building time, Steve? I'm happy to wait until they know more about the building. I don't want to have them do it uninformed. Okay. Great. I agree. Okay. Madam Chair, before we continue, um, these are the conditions so far. Uh, the only one that, that came up at the time was the boilerplate language about, you know, state, federal. Um, are we not, no longer asking them to show the vegetative buffer on the land? They will hold to the 15 foot set oh, yeah. or more. Um, I, I'm sorry, maybe I jumped in too soon. Um, no, I think we want the, no, I, even though we just talked about it five seconds ago, um, I think we do want to see that vegetative buffer on the plan. On right? the plan. But, okay. yeah. And then yeah. the last one was to return to the board with the permanent building plan and also show all the required lighting, street and circulation, potential sidewalks. It's part, yeah, and that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, so, would anyone like to make a motion with those conditions? Um, Steve, you're muted. All right. I to make a motion, but I kept the conditions from memory. Um, so the conditions were the all the series of permits, mm -hmm. state, local, federal, um, the showing the vegetative buffer on the plan and recognizing that this is a, a phased approval process. Yeah. They'll be back with revisions. Yep. I make that motion. Okay. I'll second. All right. Reading a roll. Carl. Aye. Steve. Aye. Marianne. Aye. Bonnie. Aye. Phil. Aye. And I. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So got two more things on the agenda. Thank you, planning board. Thank you. Thank you. And I've officially been sitting in this chair for about 12 hours. So um, <laughs> let's move on. Um, are we good to go to the next one? Can we right on through? Yep. Okay. Um, site plan review of a proposed 2,000 square foot mixed use commercial and residential two story building on Tay Mountain Highway at PID number 212-035, um, currently occupied by a single family residence to be demolished um, on a 0.38 acre parcel. Um, the proposal is granted both a special exception um, for residential use in the industrial commercial district um, and a variance for undersized parcel from the zoning board on the 3rd of March. Um, the parcel um, lies in the industrial commercial development, I guess I said that wrong before, and the agricultural zone. Okay. Do we, oh, Kevin, you're still here. Yes. We could have planned that a little better. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, all right, so same deal. Um, do you want Steve to pop this up on his screen to show yeah, it a little better? Right. I tried to show it behind me here, but it's not coming out very good. So um. I can do it. My one challenge is that um, it's sideways the way it came in, but here we go. I, I might be able to pop it up then. I'll put it up until you. Okay. Uh, I'm good to go if I can get screen sharing ability. Oh, I'm rotating it clockwise, going all the way around. <laughs> all right, perfect. Okay. Does that work, Kevin? I'm dizzy. Yeah, that's great. Okay. 
And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, basically what this is, is I don't know, you probably know it's granite state glass uh, is the building to the left. And there is presently a kind of an old white farmhouse that exists on the lot, which they're going, that they want to take down and they want to replace it. That's about a 1500 square foot building. And they want to replace that with a 2000 square foot building of this two stories and has <clears throat> office space on the first floor and um, two uh, apartments on the second floor. Um, and in uh, probably in 2011, I believe, <clears throat> we had a approval for three apartment units on this, on this site, but they wanted to change that now and, and go with the bottom floor as being commercial and the top floor being, like I said, two, two uh, single apartment buildings of about a thousand square foot each. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the, we did go to the ZBA and we got two, we got a special exception um, and for the mixed use and we had a variance for the lot size because it's supposed to be half an acre in this zone, but the lot the lot is only about a third of an acre. Um, the, there is a slight <coughs> increase in the impervious area on the lot, and there is a drainage study that's attached to this. Um, but basically, what the drainage study says is if we put kind of uh, French drains, which show up in detail A, on the eaves sides of the building, uh, that it two feet deep and about two feet wide with stone, <clears throat> that that will intercept enough of the water to make sure that the, any water leaving the site, which, which most of it goes to the culvert that's out on <clears throat> uh, Smith Bridge Road towards the area that says kind of bridge over there, um, towards the, right there, yeah, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> this, with this drain, with this uh, French drains on both sides, That'll make it so that the post-development runoff is no more. In fact, it'll be a little less than the pre-development runoff. Um, uh, let's see. We have we have probably an extra parking space than what we need as far as the residential and the commercial. And we've also uh, uh, accommodating two handicap uh, places out front. Uh, one of the questions that came up in the ZBA was there is a joint easement for both properties to utilize this existing driveway. And the way way we've done this is this will be, as it is now, it'll be an in and an out off of Tenney Mountain Highway, and it will be a one way out onto Smith Bridge Road. Um, we're anticipating that some point in the future there'll be some type of light turn around something at the junction of Smith Bridge Road and Tenney Mountain Highway, and that'll allow vehicles to go out and, you know, exit that way if they so desire. Um, um, and uh, the, the entrance way to both buildings is actually on the, probably the, it would be the southwest corner of the building, uh, right near the, right in front of the kind of the handicapped parking space there. That'll go in to be the stairway to upstairs and plus the uh, entrance into the office space down below. Um, I guess other than that, if anybody has any questions. I'm... I just have uh, one question mm -hmm. uh, with uh, office space in the bottom and then on top there's two apartments mm -hmm. is there still going to be room enough for people that live in the apartments to you know have a, a parking place without right. it bothering people that might be coming to the offices yes uh, yes they're, they're actually uh, they would probably share one space either out front or the uh, there's three spaces on the side of the one-way area right there which would be which would more likely be used for the tenants of the apartment, um, it's, it requires four spaces for that, so one of them would be taken up with one of the front, one of the front parking spots somewhere. Um, and, and again, this is planned for office space, so it's probably not going to be, it's not like retail. Actually, the building uh -huh. before that was a, kind of a retail space at one time. It was been in the past used as residence and as a retail space. 
uh, and it um, this would just be office, so the the traffic would be wouldn't be what it was if it was a retail operation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do we have elevations for the building? Pardon me. Are there elevations for the building? Um, yes, we did. Uh, we did have some. I sent some in. I don't have them on CAD here, uh, and I can certainly get them to you. I'm sorry that I can't. I can't put them up now because I don't. Like I said, I don't have them on CAD. Um, yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't get any in the material that we have. Has anyone else seen? No. Mm -mm. Brian or Jill, do those exist somewhere? Yes, I think they're probably with the ZBA paperwork. Um, I can get them to you as soonest. Um, basically, it just showed the uh, entry exit, how the upper uh, layouts on the in interior, not so much on appearance. Uh, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just like traditional gable roof structure, correct? Yeah, and actually, that's a they has a it has a cupola on the top, a short short cupola. Okay. Do uh, yeah, kind of, kind of traditional colonial uh, look to it. Okay. Um, so it seems like it's more on our end that we don't have, we haven't been able to see those because um, it is a obviously it's a condition of or not a condition, it's a required part of the application, um, but it just hasn't made its way to, to us. So. Um, does the board feel comfortable approving this application is complete without seeing the, the elevations? Yes. Yeah. Yep, I do. Yeah. Madam exactly. Chair, the, uh, the zoning board, the only question they had about the plan was that uh, to indicate the uh, uh, drainage on there, which I see Kevin has done. So that was their only concern. Um, so I, I just, I just, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say uh, this fits in nicely with the, uh, you know, the, our plan. Um, what do you call that? Our major the master plan. <laughs> our master plan. I'm getting tired. I'm sorry, <laughs> but yes, it fits in with the master plan nicely. I agree. Um, that's a good point. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, other questions from the board about the completeness of this application? Mm -mm. Or perhaps a motion about the of the application. Could I make a could I make a motion that we uh, accept this as complete? Yep. Or do we approve it as complete? No, you got it right the first time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. Here comes the roll. Um, Carl. Aye. Steve. Aye. Marianne. Aye. Bonnie. Aye. Bill. He's muted. Oh, um, Bill, you're muted. In frozen. In frozen. I'm going to mute you. <laughs> okay. Um, Bill. Uh, if you can hear me, aye. Okay, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> and aye. Okay. Um, all right. So, other questions, comments from the board about this application? Uh, in general, I, I like the idea. I'm happy of the redevelopment of this lot. The uh, existing structure is kind of out of character for the nature of the area. Uh, it is a, a nice little New Englander with looks like two dormers based on the Google Street View, but um, it's certainly, you know, the, the building next door recently had some investment in the uh, the law offices next door recently had some reinvestment in the, the parking lots, and I think that, uh, you know, it would be uh, good for the, the general aesthetic of the area, and I, and I support the development. Steve? I guess I'm just wondering about landscaping. I didn't I mean, it looks like it's lawn. Uh, I don't know if there were any additional landscaping details planned or. Um, I think basically what we're going to do is there's an existing tree line uh, on the 
east side, <clears throat> and they're going to try to keep as much of that as possible. And then the front and the back, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, will be, which is kind of lawn now, I think is going to remain that way. Um, there'll be the, there's a grass strip in between the two buildings that will remain as a grass strip. Steve, is that something you want to see detailed on the plan? Well, I mean, the grass is definitely on there. I'm just looking about the um, the tree line that Kevin mentioned. And the tree line's on there as well, actually. Okay. I missed it. Um, so thank you. Um, is there anything else that we, from our site plan regs, should be asking for in front of that building, or is this enough? I had to walk away from my computer, but is, is the signage and lighting depicted or is there none proposed? See the sign. There is an existing sign up uh, on the front near Tenney Mountain Highway. Okay. Yeah. And nothing on there for the lighting? Uh, no, there isn't really anything. I mean, I suspect they'll have a a light over the entrance door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, nothing was presented at ZBA that showed any lighting other than uh, lighting on the building. Yeah. And there, there isn't planned for any uh, street lights or spotlights or anything like that. Great. Other questions or comments from the board? I'm going to open it up to the public hearing. Day 27. Yep. Just going to give it a second. I mean, I, know, I can see who's here, so. Um, okay, I'm going to close the public hearing till 27. Um, bring it back to the board. Um, we're good to move forward with this without seeing an elevation um, with the, we've gotten sort of a description of what it's supposed to look like. Um, but is everyone good with that? Yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions, comments, motions? Um, I just looked back at our site plan regs on landscaping, and I'm just wondering if there's anything that could be done um, out in front of the parking. Mm -hmm. um, adequate buffers. Um, Adequate buffer landscaping screening are to be established, provided, and maintained for year-round protection of adjoining property streets and internal uses. Is that what you're reading? Yeah, section B. Mm. And down at um, adequate landscaping between site and adjoining streets. It's really that front buffer because um, we it, the language talks about adjoining streets to reduce negative visual impact. Yeah. And the, quite a few, not all, but quite a few of the businesses through there that are on the newer side have have installed some landscaping. I do realize there's a topography change and there's that kind of DOT swale. Yeah. So I just want to bring it up for the board to at least consider. Yeah. Um, I, I I'll like to acknowledge, I mean, I, I like this idea. I also want to acknowledge that this is essentially a redevelopment site as well. Um, mm -hmm. But is that something we'd like to see some sort of landscaping in the on the street set? I mean, which street are we talking about? Um, low streets. Um, you know, given given if if I can weigh in on this on the um, uh, I, I I work across the street and if I recall, I don't think there's a whole lot of landscaping in front of the Granite State Glass Building mm -hmm. or the law offices next door, and then the next next building down is actually the. Uh, uh, the dispensary, and that's that's a newer building with some nice landscaping, but I don't think it would be out of the character for the buildings and the immediate surroundings for it to have minimal landscaping. And I, and I think given that 
this use was granted by uh, the ZBA, I think we should consider the, the character of the properties in the immediate vicinity when we consider landscaping. Uh, and, and I don't think that it would necessarily be out of the character for the area to, to have minimal landscaping there. I guess my concern is that, and none of us were on the board when Granite State Glass Building went in, and whether or not that right. followed the site plan regs or not. Um, and right. the, the ATC building was originally the the green building place, and they probably went above and beyond. Um, sure. I'm you, it's pretty heavily vegetated out front now, but I'm I can only imagine that has to come down to accommodate the parking. Um, so I just want to make sure we're following our own standards. Yeah, they were not just on a cascade of a failure that happened before the rest of us were here and now we're just conforming to the existing building because even though they were never following the regulation. Yeah, and I appreciate everything that Phil said because that's also the internal dialogue in my head. Yeah, yeah. And if, if I may, the, the area in front of Granite State Glass now is all lawn mm -hmm. and uh, the one in front of the, this building is presently that way too. And, and like Steve said, it, it drops down into a pretty good swale towards Tenney Mountain Highway. Um, I mean, I certainly can ask them if they, you know, would want to put anything in front. It's not, I'm sure that's not something that they're opposed to doing. They'd like to keep the back lawn just because that would be more of an area for the tenants to go. Mm -hmm. So. Do we want to add some vegetative buffer as a condition of approval, whether we're talking about trees or shrubs or something? I would like to on the south end of that parking, between the parking and the existing sign. Okay. I, I'm always in favor of adding some sort of um, vegetation just to break up the hard lines. Mm -hmm. I, cer I certainly can pass that on. I, I think it would be um, probably something lower, lower lying, uh, you know, like shrubs that didn't go, probably not trees, I guess, and would be more in terms of shrubs and low, lower vegetation like that, I would think. Is that something, Kevin, that we can put on as an approval, or is that something you need to talk to, um, to folks before um, we can move forward. Well, I guess if you made it a condition, then it's a condition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if they feel otherwise, I guess you could. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. And I think it's fair if it's low lying vegetation. They're not specific in our regulations now. Clear so standard, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So is that. Agreeable to you? I'm happy. Okay. All right. Did I, I did close the public hearing. Um, right. So we're in good shape. So we could potentially make a motion to approve this application with any boilerplate necessary permit and, um, and a condition to um, place some sort of landscaping um, shrubs or trees. Um, on the you said southwestern corner in between the parking lot and the existing sign is that right Steve? I think it's just southern but I would defer to to the surveyor. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes yeah. I, southern yep okay. I'd call it southeastern but that's okay but yeah. <laughs> or it's kind of south southeast. Yeah. So can we say between the parking lot and the existing sign? Yeah. Does that yes. work? Yes. Okay. Could I make a motion to approve everything Rebecca just said? <laughs> <laughs> How far back in time do you want to go, Bonnie, on that one? Right. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. At least, at least five minutes. <laughs> hmm. I can't remember everything you said. <laughs> I, I'll take that emotion, as a motion and then I'll second it, Bonnie. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> Brian, do you have the conditions in there? I do. We have the uh, boiler permits, and we also have conditions 
landscaping uh, between parking and the existing sign, um, mm -hmm. and loving vegetation would be acceptable to the board. Brian, your your photo, your image is frozen with a big smile on your face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm happy. What can I say? Uh, um, the, all right, so I'm going to do the roll. Okay. Are we ready for me to do the roll? Mm -hmm. Brian's smiling, so I know he agrees. Um, Carl. Hi. Steve. Hi. Marianne. Hi. Bonnie. Hi. Phil. Hi. And I from you. Okay. So, oh, this has been a long, a long meeting. Um, do we have somebody? Uh, from I was just going to uh, fill you in on that, Madam Chair. Um, I received a phone call later this afternoon that they asked themselves to be taken off the agenda. Thank so, uh, you. yes, I, I explained to them what the deal was. We got a little bit more in depth with what they wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. There's absolutely no change to their business holding. They're just uh, adding a new factor to their treatment program. Okay. All right. So we're yeah, that's good. All right. Um, we do have three sets of minutes that I'd love to get to. If we can, does everyone have enough energy to get through three sets of minutes? Sure. Um, Thank you all very much, by the way. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Um, so somehow we never went through our minutes from January 2nd. Oh. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, so, um, has everyone had a chance to review those? Yeah, and I have them up right now, too. Okay. Any comments, um, edit for January 2nd, reaching way back in your memories, back when yeah. things were a little different? Yeah. I have no edits or comments. Maybe. I don't have any. Mm -mm. Um, it's all good to me. Okay. All right, so we at least have a few of us that were there, at least three. Um, all right, so does someone want to make a motion to approve the minutes from January 2nd? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from January 2nd as written. I would second that. All right. Um, who was there of the crew of us? It's you, me, and Bobby. I was not. Okay, Marianne wasn't there? No. Marianne was there. Was there? Yep. It's so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yes. so four of us can vote on this. So, But I'm going to read the roll. Um, so obviously, if you weren't there, please abstain. Carl? Abstain. Steve? Aye. Um, Marianne? Aye. Bonnie? Aye. Phil? Abstain. And me? Aye. Okay. Um, so we had the, the February 2nd or February 20th minutes on the list to review, but I noticed when I reviewed the March 5th ones, we had reviewed those the 20th already, so I'm going to skip those. Um, so March 5th, um, any comments, questions on March 5th? I don't have any minutes for March 5th. Okay. I'm just noticing on page two, uh, 2002 is highlighted yellow. Yeah, I wondered that. I noticed that as well. Yeah, uh, I think um, I think Carol had tried to get that off. She it was just a clerical typo thing that she was unable to undo for some reason. So not denoting anything important. No. no. Well, it's also an emphasis on the fact that we haven't reviewed them for eight <laughs> oh, years. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
took a long time. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's change that because um, the site plan regs were changed, were revised on in 2007. They yeah. Are. Ah. So. So that uh, might have been just a a, a highlight for yeah. uh, correction or update. Yep. Yes. So that's good. Thank you, Carol. Do you like Any other edits on those minutes? No. I will move that we accept the minute, or we do approve the minutes with the one edit of changing the date regarding the site plan regulations from 2002 to 2007. I'll second. Okay. And uh, I think the only one who we don't have, let's see. Um, Bill. Bill was there. Bill was there, but Carl wasn't, obviously. Um, right. Okay. Um, okay. Carl. Abstain. Steve. Aye. Marianne. Oh. Bonnie. I don't have any minutes. Oh. So I guess I abstain. <laughs> okay. um, Bill. Aye. And I. Okay. Um, and then the last ones are the minutes from our last meeting on the 2nd of April. Um, the original, the ones that Carol sent around, I believe, were the full set of minutes. And then there, so we were missing a couple of things. If you looked at it from the Google folder or from the um, email that Jill sent around mm. yesterday, um, has everyone seen the full set? I didn't receive any minutes uh, at all of that either. Okay. Um, I think they forgot me. I think so too. Um, so the one, the thing that was mentioned at the bottom of these was a vote um, of the minutes and our vote on the officers. Um, yeah, I remember all that, but I don't have the minutes okay. from it. I'm happy to leave this one for our next meeting. Because it's yeah, I don't have that either. Okay. It's right. not on. So there's a newer version out there now? Yeah, it got sent around by Carol, but the the one that somehow we got didn't have the stuff on the, the, okay. the important The important, the important part. <laughs> so okay. I was about ready to be like, oh, these look great. And I'm like, wait a minute, we had a couple extra notes in here. Um, yeah, okay. so like last page wasn't sent. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, so let's just hold off on those, um, and, and we will approve, get through those, um, at our next meeting. Um, and, um, unless there's anything, um, that we need to go over, Steve, for your class or anything like that, I guess that I've been sitting in this chair for <laughs> 12 hours, so, um, I'm about to you know, go sit in another chair for a little while. Um, so, uh, and I can send out another reminder, um, next, I'll send it out middle of next week, just a reminder of the homework that we're going to do for our next work session. Um, hey, Brian, did any applications come in? Uh, no, I was going to address that. Um, uh, oddly enough, no applications came in, Madam Chair. Okay, so <laughs> we've got two whole work sessions in the month of right. May. So, um, and I think we'll be... Um, we should be using that time to get through some of this uh, the zoning stuff we've been working on. So, uh, um, if if you want, Madam Chair, my email is open. I'll send out your uh, homework request when I when the meeting is over. The email okay. forward it. Okay. Now you're frozen in a way. It looks like you're about to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Stop uh, picking on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, um, if that's it, anything else from Brian or Jewel? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, all of the uh, coming conferences, you know, the last and last and all canceled. So, yeah. Yeah, right. Sorry, <laughs> Brian. Okay. Breaking up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, we're yeah, going to have to work on that um, yeah. internet connection. 
you've got there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like it's a, a a geek problem, Madam Geek. Uh, yeah, we got people for that. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Brian, unless it's really pressing and can't be announced in an email, um, because none of us heard it in that. But, I make a motion we adjourn. Yeah. For, for <laughs> back uh, Thank you. I second that. Okay. Last time tonight. Carl. Aye. Steve. Aye. Mary Ann. Aye. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I realize I'm looking at you, but you can't tell that I'm like pointedly looking at your face. Um, Bonnie. Aye. Phil. Uh-oh. Um, well, I'll say aye. And, uh... <laughs> Headed for the door. He looks like... Or a window. <laughs> Sounds like Phil was ambivalent about leaving. Um, all right. But I think we've got enough vote to to adjourn.